Risk assessment, assessing the likelihood of a hazard causing harm. Now, risk assessment involves investigating the hazards identified in the previous stage of risk management, that be the hazard identification stage. Here, each of these hazards is now assessed and given a value based on their likelihood of causing harm. So we're just gonna have a brief overview of what that might mean. So we've been identifying all these hazards. Now what we've got to do is actually assess them for their likelihood of, of causing harm to people. So what we're gonna look at is the workplace element, the hazard associated with it, the risk that's related to it, and what risk level it might have. So firstly, we might look at moving an object, and the hazard would be that of moving a box and the fact that I've got to manually handle that box. Now, that box weighs five kilograms. Basically, its risk associated with it is that five kilogram weight, but five kilograms isn't that heavy, but still can injure someone, so thus it has a low risk. On the other side of that, we could have another moving object scenario, same situation with the same hazard, but as you can see, the weight is a lot higher at 50 kilograms, and thus the risk level is much higher. And so we need to think further on with this in the next stage, how can I lower that risk when I get to the risk control stage? Now let's change context a bit, and now let's look at cabling. And we'll first look at an uncovered cable on the floor. So that uncovered cable, the cable itself is the hazard. The risk of the uncovered cable is I could trip on it. It's a trip hazard. And if it's uncovered and it's just sitting there, there's a high risk someone's going to trip on that. Well, if I have a covered cable and I've actually routed it properly or I put one of those Velcro straps over the top, that's still going to have a potential of causing an actual trip hazard. But it's once again a much lower risk because this time I actually have put a control measure in place lowering that risk. Okay, if that's already set up, that's a good thing. It's made it a lower risk. Same scenario, once again, same hazard, but a lower risk. I've got a third situation as well for cables, and that's an uncovered frayed cable. So the cable, as you can see, has been split and exposed the inside wires. Now, this has two risks associated in that it's a trip hazard and an electrical hazard. Two ways people can get injured from this cable, and thus still a very high risk. So I hope you can see that one hazard can have multiple risks associated if left unchecked and going to cause problems. Now, I've already alluded to this, but then obviously after this happens, we basically assess the risk level of all these. And it's not always high risk, low risk. There's many levels in between, and that determines what we're going to be doing. But once we've established that kind of risk level, we then can move on to the next stage of risk control, where we can implement methods that will help us manage the risk level of all these hazards. Just as we've seen there, as we put in cable over the top of it, some routing around it, and covered the cable to make it less risky. Basically, a number of control strategies have been used to lower the risk levels of these identified hazards.